This is my first real digital camera, other than maybe the 340 pixel camera and my early flip phones or my Treo 650. There's no touch screen, the flippy screen blocks some data when flipped, no mic jack and overheats in 4K after 5 minutes, but it has a tiny built-in electronically actuated two-stop ND filter, a 1-inch sensor, and something else very special. It is this special superpower that makes it extremely usable today, even amidst the ever-growing features our new cameras. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's jump in. What is the superpower, you ask? You probably guessed what it is based on the footage shown before the intro. Slow motion! When I very first got this camera, I remember seeing the HFR button and wondering, why does this strange acronym have its own setting on the dial? I experimented with it a few times, but eventually set it back down because I didn't know what I was doing at all. Now fast forward about five years, I was filming some product videos the other day and remembered the slow motion capabilities of this camera. I quickly set it up, started filming some slow motion clips and was absolutely blown away. There is a list of limitations I'll share in a moment when trying to film in these different frame rates, but wow, this thing is great, especially when you consider this is the small do-it-all camera made in 2016. I won't go through a list of all the differences between each edition of the RX100, but they did eventually add a mic jack in the later editions while losing some other options I still wanted. This model gained face detection after the Mark IV, finally improving its autofocus from the old contrast-based autofocus. I'm also not going to go over any of the photo features, except to mention it has a crazy 150 shot frame mode, which is pretty intense. I will, however, walk through how to set up the Mark V as a benchmark for you to understand how I'm using it and why, and then discuss some other options briefly for comparison. Okay, how do we set up the RX100 Mark V for the best quality for slow motion? Let's walk through a few thoughts and considerations before we set up the camera. First, you'll need a lot of light to film slow motion video, a lot more than you initially think. So get out your lights, have lots of batteries charged, and be ready to fill the area so your camera can see. Next, you'll want to stage your shots. Yeah, the camera can film at 960 frames a second, which is crazy, but it is only in 3 to 7 second bursts depending on what you select, which means you won't have a lot of time to get your shot. Most of the time I'm using a second person to drop the item or pour the coffee so I can press the button at the right time. And finally, we're going to put the camera into manual mode for everything. You want as much control as possible since the camera doesn't let you adjust anything while it is filming. Not even focus. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Let's start by rotating the dial to HFR. Select M for manual HFR on the screen. Now let's go into the HFR menu and change some settings. Select menu, we're going to go to item 2, HFR settings. So I'm already set up, but we're going to go through each one really quick. So 24p, 960 frames a second. Whatever you select up here will reduce it. So if you select 30 or 60, it'll playback faster. So you want 24 frames to have the slowest. Here's a quick chart showing the resolutions found on page 37 in the manual to help you make your selection if you want 960 frames a second. I select quality priority because we want the best quality from the chart we just looked at. If you want to sacrifice quality and shoot in a lower resolution for more shoot time, then select shoot time. I don't like using stop trigger, but the camera is continually buffering and will record up to when you press the button for stop trigger, so I like start trigger myself. Set the creative style to neutral. You can experiment with other styles, but I don't believe any of them will really provide any more dynamic range. So now we're going to go to menu item 6, creative style. You can already see we're in neutral. Now let's set up the other manual functions. Set ISO to the lowest setting. Select Function. ISO is already there, but if you go to ISO, you can see it jumps all the way to 6400, but we don't want that. Auto ISO will ruin most images in slow motion since it'll add unwanted grain that you don't want to attempt to try to reduce extra noise in post in DaVinci or any software since it'll have quite a few frames to wrestle with. 
So just remove the noise in the beginning, even if your shot is darker than you want. You can typically add more brightness than you think in post as your software will do a much better job than the camera. Now that the base settings are changed, let's update your shot settings. This will include white balance and focus. Adjust your white balance. So we're going to press function. And now you'll notice, oh no, it's too dark. We can't see <laughs> really how to get our white balance correctly. So what I'll do to cheat is I'll set ISO to auto just for a moment. And then I can adjust, and this does look okay. So I'm still gonna stick with that one, but I'm gonna go back and turn off auto ISO now and go back to the lowest. The video exports as 8-bit, sadly, which isn't preferable for color grading, so you'll want the white balance to be as close as possible before editing to save some time and hassle. I will admit I left one item on auto, and that is DRO to auto. So it's your dynamic range to auto. It seems to cut your dynamic range a little bit when it's off, and I haven't seen it cause any issues when I'm filming in HFR mode, so I just leave it on. Now it's time to add as much light as you can and more than you think initially. <laughs> Since you're filming in 960 frames a second, the minimum shutter speed is now one over a thousand. And if you want to use the 180 degree rule, you're going to want to try one over 2000. I filmed in both settings and didn't see a need for 1 over 2000, especially since these clips were brief uses of the content. But definitely feel free to stick whatever rules you think best will look with your shots. Now with your screen lit, select your preferred f-stop. For slow motion, I'm usually trying to stay as close to f1.8 as possible with this camera. But you might want something different depending on the light available and the depth of field preferred. Even at the fully extended zoom of 70 millimeter, you have 2.8, which is great. I'll just demonstrate here. So that's still pretty good. But I'm going to stay back at 1.8. So you can see I was already using manual focus, but we'll change to manual focus just to show. So you do have that selection. You can do AFC, which is continuous autofocus. And it looks like those are the only two choices, but I stick with manual. I don't want it to try to change anything while I'm filming. Now let's stage your shot. As I said earlier, go find some friends to help get the perfect shot if needed. Practice of movements, blocking, etc. Have everything ready, then pull the trigger and film your segments. So for me, I'm just going to fill this glass here with some Coca-Cola and see what happens when I swish it around. Okay, you're set up. Your subject is in focus. There's enough light on the scene. Okay, we're down a little bit, but we're going to keep going. Your team is standing by to pour coffee and Coke in our situation here. And you still have one final button to press in order to be able to record. Press the center button on the control wheel to get the camera ready to record. It's a weird step, but the camera will not allow you to record unless you put it in this special standby mode first. Once the text reads STBY or standby on the screen, you're locked in and ready to press the little tiny record button. What is actually happening is that the camera is forcing you to lock all the settings so you can't focus or adjust anything once you're in standby mode. You can only press record or the center button to get out of standby mode if you need to adjust anything again. Now it's time to press record. Okay, now you can see it playing back what I just recorded. One thing to note is if you press stop on canceling the recording, it will actually stop where it recorded at the bar, so your file will still be saved. So to get back out of standby mode, we're going to press the button. Now it's out of standby, and I can finally focus again. So you press it again, standby is on, start recording with the movie button, the little tiny button. So I'm going to do a fun one where I swish it and record.
Now that you had a lot of fun creating your first slow motion video, you might be wondering about some of the other cameras available to shoot slow motion. There are a ton of other cameras that shoot 4K 60 or 4K 120, so let's go a bit further to 240. If you want 240 frames per second at 1080p, there are a lot of options, but many of them are closed systems like GoPro 8, 9, or 10, the DJI Pocket 2, the Insta360 at 200 frames a second, or even cell phones like the Galaxy S22, the Xiaomi 12 Pro, and even the iPhone 13. I'm saying closed systems in regards to you being stuck with their built-in lenses with no variability like zoom. Their sensors are much smaller, requiring more light, and the glass isn't as good as the Sony RX100 either. So if you're looking for more typical cameras that shoot 240 frames a second at 1080p, then check out the GH5S or the GH6 at 300 frames a second. The Panasonic S5 gets close with 180 frames a second. The Sony A7S III and the Alpha 1 camera film 240 frames a second at a weird 1408 by 804 pixels, which is closer to 720p than 1080p. And finally, the Fuji X-T4 films 200 frames per second at an unlimited 1080p. So it'll just keep going. But what if you really want to push the limits, because 960 frames is not fast enough? Then you might look at something like the Kronos on the cheaper end, which is about four to $6,000, depending on which one you want. Or there's the master commander of them all, the Phantom V2640, which I think is around $60,000 range. It can film a meager 20,000 frames a second at 720p, which is insanity. I have a link to the slow motion guys testing one with explosions in the description. Who doesn't like watching slow motion explosions? <laughs> Filming in slow motion is magical. It adds such a brilliant layer of depth to so many different types of scenes. Product videography is a no-brainer, but what about telling your story? Slow motion definitely has its place in helping your discourse. I stopped using this camera a few years ago because I wanted to use different lenses, hated the overheating that occurred around five minutes when filming in 4K, and I wasn't a photographer, so I wasn't pulled into that world yet either. But today I still use this camera for slow motion shots that none of my other cameras can do. You can charge the battery when it is in the camera, use cheap SD cards, and you can even use an external monitor with a clean feed when you're really trying to dial in those shots. The video footage and high frame rates aren't that high of fidelity, but I absolutely love them. And you can get some extra push from your video editing software to upsample a bit. It's not necessarily just about the perfect high resolution picture for every shot, but more about the eye-catching transition shots that you can create to immerse your viewers deeper into your content in a meaningful way, complementing the big idea of the video. And a lot of footage doesn't need more than high definition anyways, especially if the majority of viewers are watching your content on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube with their phone. If you have any tricks filming in slow motion, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please let me know any questions or comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for joining.